finally it's time to start uh, our linear regression for our salary data. We go to Analyze, Regression, Linear Regression. Our dependent variable is salary. The other variables, usefulness, major code, I'm going to highlight all of these by holding down shift and using the down arrow. Major code, gender code, GPA and years are our explanatory variables. Let's hit run and see our results. We'll walk through the four tables in turn. Our first table shows 22 observations were read, which is what we were expecting. But only 20 observations were used because two observations had missing values. Let's look at our data real quick. For two of our uh, subjects, the usefulness of statistics was not known, not recorded for some reason. So we have two missing data points, rows 9 and 15 will not have been included in our uh, analysis here. We have an overall significant model looking at the analysis of variance table. The p-value for our global f-test is very significant. So we are very confident that at least some of our variables are useful for predicting salary. Jump down to our fourth table, and we're looking at the parameter estimates. Which of these are significant? Well, usefulness is not significant, is not useful, if you like. So we won't bother to interpret its parameter estimate because usefulness doesn't significantly affect salary. Major code is significant. Its p-value is much less than 0.05. So we will need to interpret the major code parameter estimate, and we'll do that later. Gender code is close to significant. It's got a significance of 0.06, a p-value of 0.06, which is just above our 0.05 threshold. If we had been running a one-sided test, if we strongly believed that the only logical uh, gender difference here is that women could earn less than men, we would have had a p-value of 0.03. But if you agreed with me and went into this agnostically, not knowing whether uh, men or women ought to have higher salaries, then this would be just outside our threshold. And so we should conclude that gender maybe doesn't have any effect on salary, or at least that we don't have evidence that gender has an effect on salary. GPA is just under our threshold, just under our 0.05 threshold. So we will want to interpret that. Though as a preview, if you look over here, it's got a negative parameter estimate associated with it. So this is telling us that people with a higher GPA get a lower salary, which is a little surprising. Lastly, we have years of experience, and this one is very significant, a p-value much less than our 0.05 threshold. So years of experience does affect our uh, salary. Lastly, let's look up at our uh, miscellaneous statistics table. We have a quite high R-squared, in fact an unusually high R-squared, of around 93%. This is not normal for this type of salary data. Uh, we've got an adjusted R-squared a little bit lower. Adjusted R-squared is always going to come in lower uh, than R-squared. Uh, so we don't need to worry about the fact that that's lower. Adjusted R-squared isn't that useful for us now. It'll become useful later in, in the class when we're comparing models, in particular when we're adding and subtracting variables from our model. Lastly of interest is our root mean squared error, or root MSE. This is around 3,000. So at around $3,000, it means that our estimates are accurate to within about $3,000. Our predictions of people's salaries are accurate to within about 